Welcome back to Sunless Skies. In the last episode, we discovered Paranessi, advanced the feline eccentrics quest here, and also advanced and, well, I guess, ended the Incognito Princess's quest here because we trapped them behind whatever portal they went through because I think there's some sort of demon thing. Yeah, so anyway, that's Paranessi for now. More to do here, but I can't do it right now. I gotta wait two weeks before they'll allow me back in. So I'm pretty low on supplies and fuel, so I want to go back to restock. They don't sell any fuel or supplies at Paranessi, actually. Just, just gems. <clears throat> so, let's go back to Pan and also explore along the way, because the straight line there goes across this big swath of unexplored stuff. Before I leave, though, I want to get as much of this bargain as I can. Seven casks of Navartine gemstones. I guess all of it? Yeah? Ah! Oh, Jesus Christ. You did that thing where when you load up the game, sometimes I'm not in the exact same place in the dock. In that case, I was basically scraping against the wall. <laughs> I thought I would hit this thing here, but apparently you don't collide with that. Thank God. Just making sure the guns work, you know. Ah. <sighs> Recover sheaves of parchment. Please give me a moment of inspiration. Ah, always a vision of the heavens. But still, I can use those to eventually buy moments of inspiration. Spinster's Garden? You hear the hateful wail of a scribe spinster. Has it come for the scraps you plundered from their library? These are the ruins of Tartarin. Tartaron? Where many roads ended. 
Oh, yeah, it's another crossroads. Do I have more to do at these? No quest stuff, but... I can accept a gift of wit. You'll gain an Eleutherian mystery, a moment of inspiration, and a little more. A moment of inspiration? <clears throat> you are a stranger here. It will teach you of things. Yeah, a moment of inspiration. Mistress Drachm does not speak, but produces a lengthy contract. Only after signing do you notice the smallest print hidden in the letterhead, stating that you are not agreeing to charity, but a loan. They disappear behind the crossroad post, leaving no trace. You return to your locomotive, and in your cabin is a small mahogany box wrapped in silks. Inside is a book written in awkward, spidery handwriting. Despite the dust on the jacket, the spine is unbroken. I've made a deal with the measurers. How are they going to collect on that loan? Another crossroads. Sorry, buddy. Stony organ, uncanny specimen. Ooh. Hmm, so now it's different things this time. Gift of foreknowledge, a gift of fire. Three fuel, an Eleutherian mystery, and a little more. Do I want to be super in debt to these creatures? The measurers? I mean, not really, but... Eh. <laughs> Except a gift of foreknowledge. You are blind. It will help you to see. Whatever hides behind Mistress Grain's veil chitters in appreciation. Good, good. Our deal is struck. Be ready to repay it. It disappears behind the crossroad post, leaving no trace. Small mahogany box, that same thing. This time no moment of inspiration, unfortunately, but Eleutherian mystery, unlicensed chart. Wait, what the heck is this? A coalition of smugglers bound by crimson oaths of silence. Oh, I haven't... Wow, that's the first time I've found the smuggling place in Eltheria. Right, because there's Pan, and then these are like the three factions that you can join. Huh. No. Oh. <laughs> I thought I would turn faster. Ugh. The gentlemen. Coalition of smugglers bound by crimson oaths of silence. This part of Pan is claimed by the gentlemen, a notorious gang of smugglers, and their families, hangers-on, clients, and parasites. Lanterns hang on posts, making paths of pooled lamplight across the ruins. Ramshackle pubs have been built in tumbled naves and old arches. Here, in the lawless galleries of Pan, the gentlemen have no need to hide their activities. Smugglers boast of their schemes and their murders, 
Wild laughter rings out. Knives glint. Take your ease. The gentlemen know of you. You're welcome here. Smugglers strut like kings through the streets, wearing their black coats like finery and their scars like crowns. They nod to you as they pass. Barrels of starshine are rolled openly along the streets. It's delivered by star rakers who comb it from Eletheria's still pools and bring it here for the gentlemen to distribute across the heavens. In the taverns and on the streets, a hundred shady deals are being struck. The air hums with illicit opportunity. Right, we've heard of the barrels of star stuff. This is where you get them. <clears throat> the Midnight Confessional. In the gloom behind the lights of Pan, the gentlemen ply their midnight trade. They shun those who don't know their signs or their oaths, forbidding entry to their hidden sanctuary. But a confessional box stands on the platform's end. There, Skyfarers may sell information to the gentlemen, while the identities of both parties remain safely concealed. Well, I have 79 Tales of Terror. <laughs> Ooh, what can we do? So, unlicensed charts. Crimson Promise. I mean, the experience is pointless, so this would only be for the Sovereigns, which I also don't need. Oh, I'm actually kind of low right now, but I think that's just because I have bought a shit ton of stuff. I think if I sell the extra stuff at port, I'll probably have a lot. Five Crimson Promises, four unlicensed charts, 38 Savage Secrets, Tales of Terror. I think I should probably offer those. I have an absurd amount. So this is to offer five at a time and you only gain 85 sovereigns for five. Is that really worth it though? What's the point? Like maybe I'm gonna meet the sun at the House of Rods and Chains and it's gonna take a hundred tales of terror to uh, convince them of something. I don't know. There's just no point in doing this, so why? I don't need the money. I really don't. Not that I'm extremely rich, but... Uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe I will need the money in just a minute. Let's see what they have here. Mm, hidden Hold. Oh, that's an upgraded concealed cavity, isn't it? Avails 50 plus. Plus three hidden compartments instead of plus two. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm going to buy two of these and take them back and just put them in my bank. The other things I think I've already seen before, and I think I already have them. No description for the star shine? No, no pop-up description for some reason. Oh, no, there we go. Oh, weird. I gotta, like, put my mouse on, like, the left side corner to get it to pop up. Star Rakers comb water from the glassy pools of Eleutheria into these mirrored jars. It's laced with familiar starlight, shed by stars visible from old Earth. Starshine for Lustrum. Starshine for Whirlberry Juxtamare. Hmm. I think I want to do these. Well, at least Lustrum. Because I want to go back to the Reach. Because I need to go to Kirillin to clear my soul so I can go to Caduceus and they'll accept me. Um, I want to go to Magdalene's to reduce my nightmares. I can now do that once. Yeah, let's take that. Five things of Starshine. Do I have room for that? Yeah. Let's get a... Hmm. I'm wondering what random events are going to happen with the Starshine, because sometimes you lose some of the product because of weird stuff that happens with it, so I'm wondering if I should buy more. Hmm. Yeah, I'll get six.
I am extremely low on money right now. I need to sell a bunch of my stuff. Back at Pan, I'm just going to sell everything that's over 20. I'm just going to sell as much as I need to to get each one down to 20. And that alone is going to give me over 5,000 coin. And I could make a lot more, especially if I sold things like the gemstones and the immaculate souls. But let's just stick with taking anything down to 20. 5,800. I, I think that's good spending money, you know? Good slush fund. I do have a couple eggs on board as well. They haven't, um, I was going to say hatched. They don't really hatch. They haven't cracked yet. But I don't remember what the word eater gives you for them. Oh, you can sell it for Eleutherian Mysteries? That is absolutely worth it. I don't remember how many you get, but I'm sure it's a substantial sum. Remember, Eleutherian Mysteries equal moments of inspiration. Sell all of your eggs for Eleutherian Mysteries. What are eggs in the face of knowledge? Twelve Eleutherian Mysteries. That's really good. Oh, that's one and a half inspiration. Because it takes eight to buy one. The man takes each egg and holds it up to the light. He rotates each carefully, checking for cracks, perhaps. When he is satisfied, he places the egg into a sturdy leather sack. All done, he grunts. You shall be recompensed. He leans close and whispers. Hints of Eleutherian secrets, clues as to Pan's nature, reasons why the word eaters collect stories. Got all my inventory squared away. Put on the hidden holds so that I can properly conceal all six hog sheds of starshine. What I gave up for doing that, by the way, is a bunch of health and also a bunch of space for people. So I just lost like half my crew, basically. But that's fine. Not a big deal. Um, let's convert all of my Eleutherian Mysteries into Moments of Inspiration. I might get enough Moments of Inspiration to actually reduce my Nightmares by two, which would be amazing. Give me a little bit of breathing room, you know? Ah, uh, yes. Look at December's work. Yep. Eight Eleutherian Mysteries for a Moment of Inspiration. We're painting a map of the sky. The closer you look, the more detail you see. It's as if your eyes were microscopes. There. London, precise in every detail, even down to the throne. Here's where you are in Pan. If you look closely, you might be able to make out Winters reside in Corncrake House. And then closer still, December looks up and shakes their head. It is a warning, not a chastisement. The image doesn't leave your head even as you stagger back to the main house. Got to go back every time I want to do this for some reason. So I'm going to have eight moments of inspiration. Yeah, I think it's going to cost seven to get my nightmares reduced twice. So, sweet. Alright. Let's go back to the Reach. So I'm going to head over to the Eagle's Empyrean. This time I think I am going to cut that out because we've already been there. We just were there. Oh, hey, what is that? Um, something ghastly. I was going through the Belt of Midnight to the Empyrean, and I saw something appear there, and I thought, hmm, something in the Belt of Midnight? Because I don't think, like, blind hermitages or anything like that just pop up in the Belt of Midnight. thought it might be something special, and it is. What is that? Extinguishments plague Eleutheria, eruptions of clotted night. Oh, an eruption of clotted night. Isn't that one of the things where one of those monsters came out of it? The ones that like go invisible? Is there a monster around it then? Can I... Uh, do I want to... Whoa. Oh yeah. Yeah, something just spawned. Chip. 
I remember they go invisible when you don't have your light on them. Damn, they're fast. This one seems different than the others. It's not shooting things at me. It's doing just like AoEs. The other one had like blades that it would shoot at me. Temptation of Starshine. I knew something would happen. Several crew members are late for the shift. You find them in the hold, telling stories of home by the somber, nostalgic glow of your Starshine supplies. Word will undoubtedly soon spread amongst the rest of the crew. Give it to them, make an example of them, or set a watch. Let's set a watch. 76% chance of success. You won't punish them, but you will try to stop it happening again. Success. And we got terror reduction, too. No more incidents. Whoa, is that the same one? Or is it just doing the other attack now? Ow. Departed, defeated. So we've seen this before. Pry out its eyes. Gain the Varty gemstones or sovereigns. Burn the remains. Spend fuel to reduce terror and gain a tale of terror. That sounds good. Yeah, let's do that. That's a substantial terror reduction. The thin air of the heavens fills with greasy smoke. The smell is overwhelming. Flames devour the corpse. Or is it simply fading from view again, hiding itself in the unseen corners of the night? So wait, this is still here. Even though it's not marked on the map anymore. Can I just, like, go through it? Nah. My lights went out, but that's about it. That thing is scary. I thought I'd get sucked into it, maybe. The price of charity. A sound of chittering fills your cabin. From the shadows near the door steps a familiar silhouette. Mistress Grain has come to collect what it deems you owe. Okay. Pay the chrysanthemum price, the amaranthine price. Refuse to pay the price? Let's not do that. Mm, so the amaranthine... Price would take two supplies. Oh wait, two crew? No. Wait, the chrysanthemum price requires 14 visions of the heavens? Holy shit. A price of knowledge and innocence. So this is going to make me lightless. Where do I go to cure lightlessness? Can that also be done at Kurilin? Or is that somewhere else? I almost want to refuse. What they want as repayment is not equal to what they gave me at all. Hmm. I'm going to refuse to pay the price demanded. You will not be intimidated in your own cabin. Oh, here we go. lost more hearts. <laughs> Mistress Fathom reaches for a strip of cloth dangling from its hat and gives it the gentlest of tugs. Its many veils tumble to the ground and it lunges. Your only memories are of acid flashes of claw, the echo of clacking noise, and the scraping of mandibles being forced down into your throat. Ugh. The creature does not take a pound of flesh. Nothing so merciful. Something far deeper has been extracted in partial payment, leaving only nightmares to fill the void. <laughs> oh, 
My poor, poor hearts. Becoming ever more frozen. Okay, the Empyrean. I guess there's no point in doing any of that stuff, really. I do want to repair my ship, of course. And we should be able to enter and do something. Oh, my contraband. I mean, it's hidden well. Yeah, it's fine. The Ovo Return Skies, the Cons Market. Let's go to the Cons Market this time. All merchants in the Empyrean, whether citizen or not, operate only with the express permission of the Eagle Con. The Great Market fills the square below the Con's palace. The locomotive stations are on the other side of the city, so foreign merchants must travel through the splendid thoroughfares of the Empyrean to get here. Each street is lit by evenly placed electric lights. The light is cold and casts hard shadows. Um, that description is the same as when we went to some other places. Joining the festival of all conquering. There's no getting anywhere quickly today. The sixth day festival is in full swing. You may as well join in. Dancers from the palace wander the main streets, performing the histories of the Empyrean. It's opening of the gate to all skies. The raising of the Empyrean bringing light to darkness. It's technologies, the Outriders, and the Xanthus Moon. Some of the dances are very complicated. The palace provides the roasted street food that waters your mouth. The London Embassy begrudgingly foots the bill. Gain a Sky Story. Ah, and to do this, London must consider me a... Consider me a reliable informant, which is never going to happen. Explore the market. The marvels of imperial technology are on display. There are spices in such abundance, you can taste cardamom and cloves in the air. You admire matted wool as intricate as a spider's web and as bright as sunlight. It displays figures from history. Most prominent is the great Khan who built his kingdom in the Z. Where does the wool come from? The stall keepers will not say. For now, you only pick up a few souvenirs. The electric lanterns, the miniature moons produced by the Empyrean, are unavailable to you. Stall keepers eye you with suspicion when you ask and turn away. After a while, a troop of very polite guards escort you out. Crit of nostalgic crockery, and that's it. So, not that much. Oh, a little ceremony is that a terror reduction thing? Yeah, cool. Alright, let's... Oh, right, we don't actually head on through to the reach from here. It's actually, like, just behind this place. Right. Hey, you got any deals, by the way? No bargains. Whoops, wrong button. Hey, I found something. That back there, I guess? Another thing in the belt of midnight. I wonder if it's more clotted night. Back at the reach. Already stopped at Hybris and, you know, bought some bargains there in the circus and did all that good stuff. And Winchester dropped off some things, repaired my ship. All the normal stuff. Just pulling into Magdalens now. Let's get rid of some nightmares. Who do I want to meet? My new friend. He is pleased to be off the locomotive for a time. The room is cold as a morgue. Two beds have been prepared. Your friend is in one already asleep. They're stacked like bunks as though you were in a child's room, or perhaps a cabin. He's gone when you wake to the sound of the clock. My dreams are now three. Horrifying. Let's do it again. Her 
her renewed majesty. It's going to take four out of five of my moments of inspiration to do this, by the way. I think we've done all of these before. Actually, I don't remember reading this one. You've been invited to a private dinner at New Clarence's house. Or New Clarence's house. Starlight filters over the table through the glass windows that gaze out over all Albion. Your dinnerware is arrayed in sixes. Six forks, six knives, six goblets. You stand for every toast, including one given in your honor. The captivating princess demands you give the speech. You raise your glass to her enduring majesty and even venture a joke. Her laughter is quick and sudden as ice breaking on a lake in winter. Now my nightmares are just awful. Wonderful. What we do with the keepsake market? 350 sovereigns for an unlicensed chart. I'm actually kind of low on charts. I should probably get one. I don't need to significantly reduce terror. It's already at just 8%. Let's get an unlicensed chart. Now I've got five. They have tea. Let's buy as much as I can. And be on my way. Let's go to Carilla next. The cold that kills. The temperature has plummeted and continues to fall by the hour. Pipes lock with ice. The crew wrap themselves in coats and blankets. It will not be enough. Some mutter that you've angered the waste wife, who speaks in frost and bitterness. The wife... Is it wife or waif? I'm not sure. The wife is a lonely power. Perhaps its displeasure would ease if you give it some company. Hmm. Choose a suitable scapegoat. <laughs> in my crew, no. Stoke the engine. Cast out all your supplies and begin fasting or just endure. Let's stoke the engines. Shovel more fuel. The boiler will drive the cold away. The stokers work extra shifts. The fires rise. The boiler hums. The pipes are scalding to the touch. The corridor is warm as toast. Slowly, your locomotive shrugs off its coat of pale frost. We have another temptation of starshine. Once again, set a watch. Ah, success again. We are at Kurilin now. So, here I need to fix my soul. There's a lot wrong with it, actually. It's flickering, clear, and stained. So I need to do all that. And also, we should be able to entice one of the three cats to step off here. Port report. Oh, I can recruit some desperate souls to join the psalmists. The white whale well beckons, promising a respite from endless penance. I don't know if they'd like it much more there. You gather a group of Kirillin's most hopeless cases. The souls who have been stuck here for years, undergoing the cycle of failed penances again and again and again. You tell them about the Judas Psalm. The psalmists don't care about the quality of a soul. The more bitter and twisted, the better. One of the failed penitents rubs his hands. I like the sound of that. Frankly, I'll go anywhere that's not here. Take the feline eccentric and Pyman on a tour of the terraces. Pyman is aloof, distant, restrained. The eccentric thinks he will be at home amidst the sober, scrupulous suffering inflicted at Carillon. Pyman watches as penitents quietly request their punishment. He observes the devil's recommend exact castigations. Then, rapt, he stares as the penitents endure their punishment without complaint or immodest anguish. He does not purr. Purring is not Pyman's way. But he admires the penitent's stoicism and how Carillon administers sober, undramatic chastisement. Also, the devil steadfastly ignore him, which he seems to like. When you turn back for your locomotive, Pyman makes no move to follow. Pyman has, de has departed. Ah, oh, yes! I'm glad I'm being rewarded for this. The eccentric chose a gentler course. Remember, for each cat, there's basically the choice to use the carrot or the stick. The carrot is 
make them want to stay in a place because it fits them so well and the stick is... I'm not exactly sure, just piss them off so that they find it intolerable to stay. And I'm glad that it seems to actually make a difference which one you choose. Right, I don't remember which places do which, so I guess I'll just visit every one of them. Wait, I'm not lightless, I need lightless. I thought I had lightness. 100% chance of succeeding at this, I might as well get a couple enlightenment penises on- Pe penises? <laughs> I'll get a couple enlightenment penises. <laughs> Lightless, lightless, wasn't I lightless? Stained, clear, oh clear is the one I was thinking of, clear, lightless. Okay, those are different. To the ritual of purification. And to the bell garden now that I've done the ritual. Mm, fermented soul, no. Well, whoops. Checkerboard garden. Curled, no. Stunted grove. Cold soul, also no. You need a stained soul to be admitted. All right, well, I got that. Oh, I can just cure it, because I... I just needed 10 penance in total? Is this like the total penances that I've gotten? But anyway, I have enough. Let's cure it. Perhaps you've looked into topics you should not have. Perhaps your soul has been consumed and spat out again by an unspeakable beast. There are still a few flaws in your soul, but matters are improving. Sand garden for the clear soul. I'm trying to remember if I've actually been here before. Have I been here? The penitent ape. No, I have been here. I remember them. What did I need to help them? Excess five. Or inescapable truth five. Oh, did I do that thing where I could have gained inescapable truth, but now that I've cured my soul of the thing, I can't get it anymore? No, wait, that. You can get it here? Where the penitent. No, wait. Wait, where was the penitent ape? This is the grim penitent? I'm. So confused. Game's probably gonna get laggy soon, so let me just close out of this. Let's do that again. Hmm, I did this one, the sand garden. Okay. So let's get some inescapable truth. 54% chance of success. Even with my mirror skill. Wow, that's hard. Here the devils treat flatterers, the excessively malleable, and those who don't know themselves at all. Thankfully I started at like zero terror, so this should be pretty easy. I don't think I'll read those things. The kind of like randomly generated combinations of things about other people's getting their penance or not getting it. So I need five.
three. Yeah, that's three. Thank God I'm in the reach where terror is easy to get rid of. There we go. That's five. Hmm. Let me see what the Grim Penitent wants. He seems oblivious to your presence. The man is slim and there are circles under his eyes. Meet a Grim Penitent. Uh, he shows no energy at all. He lifts his eyes when you seat yourself. It takes time to get him to speak. He finds the effort of conversation very hard going. For the first few exchanges, he confines himself to the weather at Karelin. But finally, he tells you why he's here. Too many years I lived on the other side of a mirror, he says. So long that I forgot everything but that place and its ways. Where is and is not changes places. I took a companion and endured his not love. It took me a long time to recognize it for what it was. You're assisting a penitent who had a little too much contact with the Finger Kings. Yes, the Finger Kings are, I think, basically the rulers of Parabola. Parabola is the place that's accessible through mirrors. And I think the place that the princess went to. So what do they need? Five endurance or five excess. Five endurance or five excess. Well, I can't get excess, so it's going to have to be endurance. What did, what did endurance take again? Was it hearts or iron? Yeah, it's iron. Oh, hello. Gain a great deal of endurance penance with a barrel of unseasoned hours. There are ways of not having to wait, like letting someone else wait in your place. That gave me four endurance and also two penances indulgence. Waiting with the other patients, but quickly. <laughs> a lady of no imagination sold a relative's body to medical men as being cheaper than burial. For the penitent's own good, she has been buried alive. <laughs> Would you say you're feeling more or less conscious of your mortality than when you began this program? Asks the supervising devil. So I need one more. Heck yeah. Okay, well, we should be able to solve the penitent ape's problem and the other person's problem. <clears throat> Give the ape a truth. Souls can't be polished post-death. Uh, probably not, anyway. You offer the ape understanding, and it bites you on the arm. Not a little nip, either, but a deep, angry bite. It has seen nothing but contempt since it arrived here at Kirillin. Your honesty, if you like to call it that, is the latest in a line of humiliations. It is finished. It is through. It does its business next to your shoe and scuffles off with its soul collection, leaving one or two trinkets behind. You're welcome. Thanks for the two uncanny specimens. Let's cure my clear soul. So now the flickering soul thing. The Grim Penitent. Give the mirror-bound penitent a little staying power. Endurance and the ability to come through things is necessary after the experience he's had. <clears throat> he considers the penance dubiously. It does look a bit like a salami wizened behind a bookshelf for a few centuries. <laughs> then he overcomes his reticence and consumes it. He looks better almost right away. Energy restored, mood elevated, voice firmer. Where has he been? Some place that belittled him. Not just a mirror, but a curved mirror that shows you smaller than you are. 
but he has come back from there, and now he's ready for a new adventure. He's heard legends of what's out there. He just needs to go and look. I've got almost a hundred sky stories. Cure my flickering soul. Your soul is as pristine as a newborn's baby. All right, I think we would be accepted in a caduceus. Now the game's getting super laggy again, so let's redo that. I don't think there's anything more to do here, though. Right? Anything to do with the presiding devil-esque? I always wonder that, and I think the answer is, like, always no. No. <laughs> I don't think there's any point in purchasing an indulgence, is there? Do I need indulgences? I don't think I've used them for anything. Okay, yeah. Let's move on to Lustrum, because I need to bring all my smuggled goods there. At Lustrum, let's drop off the Starshine. Oh, let's read the prospect, too. A thought of home, Starshine for Lustrum. One of the gentlemen, Pan's notorious smugglers, claims to have an opportunity for you. However, getting details out of him is difficult. He seems distracted by old memories. Has he been sampling the shinny? Is it shiny or shiny? Because, you know, stars shine, shiny, shiny. Anyway, eventually you're able to get, uh, you're able to extract the necessaries. Five hogsheads of, hogsheads, hogsheds of starshine to be delivered to a shiny joint at Lustrum. Lustrum lies to the, yep, yep, yep. Should be a really good profit. 1750 just for selling them directly, plus... More reputation with the smugglers. Now I'm now at six, a covener, a bonus 1250, and a vision of the heavens. That's really lucrative. Oh, and they're selling honey as a bargain. I'll take all of that. Done with reach business for now, so I'm just back at Eleutheria. Want to go back to Pan to drop off all sorts of stuff, but let's explore a little bit along the way, shall we? Just like we went from here down to Pan, let's go from, like, here up to Pan. 